Okay, so in this video we're going to look at how to deal with screen modes on the retargetable output of a vampire board. The important thing to note about the vampires is that you're not going to be able to get automatically native modes for every possible TV or monitor. The Vampire's FPGA is limited in its ability to drive high pixel clocks. And it's high pixel clocks that you need to be able to do 60 hertz refreshes at all display sizes, particularly when you start getting into the, the large modes uh, like 1080p or thereabouts. Uh, so there's some things you can do to help try and find modes that will work on whatever TV or monitor you're using. In this case, I'm using a Dell U2410, which is a really, really good monitor for use with Amigas. Um, it's VGA inputs can sync down to 15 kilohertz, which gets you the native display modes from you know OCS, ECS, and AGA. But it's also pretty good at syncing at low refresh rates on the other mode, the other inputs. So in this case, uh, you're looking at uh, 960 by 540, which is half of the native resolution of 1920 by 1200. Uh, so every Amiga pixel is effectively drawn twice on each axis on the monitor. But I'm going to show you how to deal with some of these uh, slight issues that you might have finding modes for your monitor. So the the very first thing you should do really is try a very small mode. So uh, let's switch over to ECS mode and we'll start seeing how we can test stuff. Okay, so here what I've done is I've switched the monitor over to its picture by picture mode. Uh, the, the Dell 2410 can show two inputs at once, either one in one picture inside the other or the two next to each other. So on the left hand side I've got the HDMI output of the Vampire and on the right hand side this is the RGB output of the A600 connected via an RGB to VGA cable. I'm running in the uh, multi-scan mode which you'll find in the system storage monitors directory uh, which just lets you get a slightly higher screen mode without having to use interlacing. I found interlacing is working very badly for me. I don't know if it's the adapter I'm using from RGB to VGA or if it's the monitor or if it's something wrong with the motherboard in my 600, but this mode works fine. It can only do four colors, but for these purposes, it doesn't matter at all. So what we need to do is go to the system preferences folder. And by this point, you should have at least Silver 5, uh, Silver 5 core installed on your Vampire's FPGA and you should have Picasso 96 and the latest SAGA drivers. And what we're going to do is fire up Picasso 96 mode. Okay, so looking in this list now, we can see quite a few screen modes here predefined. Um, I've customized this quite a lot since the, the settings that are supplied with the SAGA drivers uh, because I wanted to make sure that I had lots of modes that worked well for me. But I think, generally speaking, a good idea is to start somewhere around the 640 by 400 or 480 kind of range. And what you effectively want to be doing is using this test button over here. So let's just talk through these settings. These are the different settings groups that the, the program knows about. I've only just got one in there. And each of those groups has a list of resolutions. Those are the ones listed here. Each of those resolutions has a series of uh, modes. And the modes can vary by a number of things. Generally speaking, you'll only want to vary them by the depth. It seems unlikely that you would want to have different um, pixel clocks or refresh rates for the different modes, but you may choose to do that. But typically speaking, it's quite likely you're going to have all four of these um, set up with identical refresh rates and just vary by the colors. So that's 256, high color, which is 16 bit, true color, which is 24 bit, true alpha, which is 32 bit. And um, there are two particularly useful buttons down here you're going to want to know about, test and edit. Test is really simple. That will just switch the graphics card on and enable that mode and show you a nice little test pattern. And the things you're looking for here are that the picture is stable. There's no um, little random pixels flickering around. There's no loss of sync. And crucially, that the entire frame of the image fits in. You should be able to see the four circles in each corner and all of the boxes that they touch into. So that mode there seems to be working really well. Uh, you can exit out of this test screen with mouse buttons or keyboards. So if, you, if you're looking at a mode that your monitor can't sync, you don't have to reboot. Just click or poke a button and you should find the test exits and you go back to your native mode. Uh, you'll find that the, the, the Vampire's RTG board will, will continue to output whatever was last left in the frame buffer. So even though you can see the test card on the left there, it's not actually active anymore. It's just continuing to show whatever was last there. 
The other thing, once you find that the test card works, if you do want to tweak it, maybe the, the picture is slightly the wrong size or it's slightly fuzzy, the edit button is extremely helpful. That brings you this, which is now flipped over to the, the mode that you're looking for and you get to adjust those same values and there are keyboard shortcuts. Um, so it's quite helpful if you're particularly trying to, to work with a mode that's right on the edge of what your vampire and monitor are able to sync. You know, you're trying to bring the vampire's clock rate down but without going too far for the monitor. Is to, to make a note of some of these um, keyboard shortcuts, so like control up and down for controlling the pixel clock. You can do those and then your monitor will you know, show a picture a few times and then you'll go one step too far. The monitor will say, I can't handle it anymore and you can just use the keyboard shortcut to get back to where you are. Uh, so let's come out of that and we're back to native. So uh, if we wanted to create a new mode, the, the Picasso 96 mode application works in a very strange way. You've got these four big buttons at the top and everything works with drag and drop. So this first one on the left lets you create new things. So if you drag it over to here, you'd create a new settings kind of bundle. Down to here, you'd create a new resolution. Over to here, you'd create a new mode. Uh, and then if you want to delete one of them, you would drag it out of wherever it is onto the skull and crossbones. And it would be deleted. If you want to duplicate one, you would drag it onto here. And uh, so, for example, we could try a higher resolution mode. So let's see what would happen if we... We're trying to get 1280 by 720 to work, which it probably will uh, on this monitor. Okay, so there we go. There's 1280 by 720. This isn't a great mode to use on the monitor. It's a, a 16 by 9 mode. This is a 16 by 10 monitor. You can set the monitor to either stretch the image to, to fit the display or to scale it appropriately and give you some black borders. Uh, but let's say for the sake of argument that it wasn't going to work for us, the, those screen modes weren't quite right. We've got a tool we've written that's available on Aminet called UMC. And UMC stands for Universal Mode Line Calculator. And what you do is you run UMC and then the uh, width and height of the mode, so uh, 1280, 720, and then a refresh rate. Now, you're going to want this refresh rate to be as low as you think you can get away with on your monitor. It's possible that some monitors would do uh, 720p mode at 24 hertz, but you're probably going to be trying to get somewhere more like 50 hertz. Uh, for people who want to run the 1080p mode, you're almost certainly going to have to be on a monitor or a TV that can do a 24 hertz mode. Um, 1920 by 1080 at 50 or 60 hertz requires a pixel clock way higher than the vampire is capable of. So let's ask for 50. And then there's a specific mode, uh, a specific command line option that you need to pass here, which is minus minus RBT. So there are two ways of calculating screen modes. You can use uh, the default mode, CVT, or coordinated video timing. Uh, or you can use RBT, which is reduced blanking timing. And what this effectively does is adjusts various values about the screen mode to try and minimize the pixel clock. So if we run this, we can see there that the pixel clock is showing up as 53 megahertz. Now that is pretty high for a vampire. Uh, typically speaking, you don't want to be going too much above 45 megahertz. Once you're starting to get above that point, you're driving the, the FPGA pretty close to its limits and it's it's more and more likely the higher you go that you'll start getting um, little random pixels going wrong in the screen mode or you won't be able to maintain a stable sync to the monitor. Once you start getting up to 50, 55, you're, you're really reaching the limit of the FPGA's ability. Uh, so it's very unlikely you'll find stable, clean screen modes at those kind of pixel rates. So here, even using the reduced uh, blanking timing, we're still kind of pushing the limits of, of what the vampire is, is able to handle. Um, however, it tends to be the case that even if you look in your manual's monitor and it tells you that it will do this particular screen mode at this particular refresh rate, it's usually quite likely that there's actually a window around that that it will be able to sync at. And this is where the, the test and the edit modes in the Picasso 96 application really come in handy. Even if you, if you can get the screen mode to appear, even if it's kind of you know slightly unstable or there's some snow on the picture, you can still then edit the mode and try and reduce the clock and see if, as you reduce the clock, whether the... And so that reducing the pixel clock will reduce the vertical frequency. And you may find that your monitor is actually still able to handle it. So in the UMC mode here, the UMC um, output here, 
uh, the first section, this is a, a mode line that would be suitable for use with uh, X11, so like X386 or Xorg on a Linux or BSD machine. Uh, but we've effectively added this section here, which prints out a series of values that are in the same format and same layout as the Picasso 96 mode. So if we go and compare that now to my actual uh, 1280x720 mode, which is here, and we'll see there that I was able to get on this monitor uh, down to a pixel clock of 31.5 megahertz, and that's very comfortable, very comfortably inside the range that the vampire is, is happy to deal with. Um, and when you start to play around with these values, you notice that reducing the pixel clock will reduce the vertical uh, frequency particularly. So we can see here that this monitor is actually happy to do a 720p at 29 hertz, which is a very strange frequency. You would never see that listed in the manual as a, uh, a mode line that it was actually able to support, and yet it does. Um, and you'll also notice that even though the horizontal frame size is the same, I've reduced the vertical frame size. What that does is when you reduce these frame sizes without the clock changing, the frequencies go back up. Now, th there's a, a lot of stuff you can read about on Wikipedia, Wikipedia about what these different things mean. They, they have different names in different places, but effectively what you're describing here is the size, the full size of the signal that's being sent by the graphics card. So that needs to include all of the pixel data and also all of the sync data. So there are little sync pulses that get sent uh, that kind of wrap around the image to say, you know, I'm starting a new line, I'm starting a new line, I'm starting a new line, here's the data of that line, I'm starting a new line, here's the data of the line. And then when it gets down to the bottom, uh, a vertical sync saying, that's it, I'm starting to go back to the top. This is all derived from the old uh, CRT world where you had a physical electron beam sweeping across the display, drawing the pixels. And it was important that the mode uh, being outputted by whatever you know graphics port your CRT was connected to accounted for these uh, sweep times. So when the, the electron beam reaches the edge of the screen, it has to sweep all the way back to the start of the next line. <clears throat> and when it reaches the bottom of the screen, it has to sweep all the way back to the top. So those, those things still exist even in the modern LCD world for reasons that defy all explanation. Um, but basically by adjusting and twiddling with these values, you can try and drive down the pixel clock and drive the frame size down to keep the frequencies up at a level high enough that your monitor can handle. And then typically you need to pay attention to these sync polarities. When you're dealing with high pixel clocks and you know, high bandwidth output graphics cards, you don't need to worry about these so much, but in the reduced blanking situations, usually speaking, you want a positive horizontal sync polarity and a negative vertical sync polarity. And so by using the UMC tool and then fiddling around a little bit in Picasso 96, you may be able to get higher screen modes. So, you know, typically uh, Amiga graphics cards have not tended to do very high modes unless you're using a modern PCI card and a mediator or something like that. Uh, most of the classic cards, you know, 1024 by 768 would be a pretty reasonable mode. And it seems quite likely that pretty much everybody should be able to find a 1024 by 768 mode that works. But for example, here, uh, for some reason on this monitor, I'm having to drive it at 47.17 megahertz pixel clock, which is pretty high. I mean, it does, I believe it does work, uh, but we're at the, the sort of the limits of what the, the card is able. In fact, there we go. You can see there I've got unstable sync. Uh, it's taking the monitor a long time to agree. And the pixel, the, the, um, the picture was dropping out sometimes and is still now not stable. So let's see if we can debug that into a stable mode. So we will edit the mode. And if we now do control down to decrease the pixel clock, so you can see there now that the, the vertical and horizontal frequency values are going down, but the picture is staying on the monitor. So right now this is a 49 hertz mode and the monitor is still happy with it. But there I've driven it too far in that direction and the monitor is no longer able to look onto it. So we can go back up one or two notches. And so it seems like now that on, on here, 46.46 megahertz is going to be the, the smallest I can do. Uh, the, sorry, the lowest I can do. But I can still also try and reduce the frame size 
which on the keyboard shortcuts is referred to as H total for the horizontal frame size and V total for the vertical frame size. So I can try shift down to reduce the vertical frame size. And unfortunately this now is moving the picture off the display. The reason for this is that because uh, the screen mode is 1024 by 768 and you also have to allow space for the sync information um, you start to reach a point there isn't actually enough space for the full image but what we can try and do is so we've got the position values as being positive those describe where the image goes within the signal we can try and reduce those and those are the left right up and down so if we move the image down or rather we press down on the keyboard we'll see the position value go down to zero and that should then allow us to reduce the frame size a little. No, it's not. Okay, so we're right on the edge here. This seems like it's probably the lowest I'm going to be able to go. I can reduce the horizontal position, but that isn't really gaining me very much because when I try and reduce the pixel clock, I'm still, yeah, it, it's still now going too low on the vertical uh, refresh rate. Okay, so that's the lowest mode we're going to get, which is at 46.46 megahertz, uh, which is a little bit high, I would say, but it's, you know, it's on the edge. You need to experiment for yourself and see whether this is stable for you or not. When you're using the edit mode, if you exit by hitting enter, which is, hopefully they don't tell you on the little shortcuts list, uh, that will then preserve the values back across into P96 mode. When you've finished editing some kind of mode, uh, you want to click the use button to store those values and then you would click save and it will go from write those to disk and require you to reboot. And the idea then is that you have come up with a selection of modes that you're happy with that work and you can go back to your screen mode preferences after you've rebooted, find the mode that you chose, in my case my preferred mode is the, as I said, the 960 by 600 is here in 32 bits. Uh, the number of colors here, so the, the screen mode, this is a 32-bit screen mode, the number of colors here, this refers to how many colors have been given to Workbench. It's generally speaking not really worth taking that past 256. There's no real need to push that any higher. And there we go, there is my screen mode. Uh, if we pop that out of the picture by picture mode so there we are that's the full size image again one thing you might notice is that these icons all have a blue tinge to them this seems to be a bug somewhere I'm not sure if this is a bug in the Picasso 96 driver or in the vampire core itself uh, but something seems to be getting the workbench palette slightly wrong what I've found is that just running the palette preferences and clicking use will restore everything to its shiny glory. And there we go. If I open those folds up again, there are all of the palette stuff, uh, palette colors shown correctly. And that is a little intro into how to attempt to get screen resolutions to work on your vampire.